so you finally mustered up the courage to learn how to do Zora. This is good. You're gonna need it. Zora has the opposite of most learning curves. He's hard to learn but easy to master. Maybe you've watched a Zora guide before, maybe you haven't, but hopefully this will be the last one that you need. The only thing of note that I want to say is that this guide will be tailored for beginners. It's not going to include a lot of max, main, high level strats. And if you've seen any of my other boss guides, you know right now I'm going to throw down some timestamps. We're going to get into it. Let's start with the basics. What do you need to start getting some Zora kills? Well before anything, you need to complete the Regicide quest, or at least up to the part where you're at Port Tyrus. There'll be a few ways of getting there after the quest, but I definitely prefer the Fairy Ring route. Unfortunately, you'll need level 76 agility to use the shortcut with it, or 71 with the Summer Pie. At least the code letters are easy to remember. Also, before you fight Zora for the first time, you need to talk to the High Priestess located nearby. And I'll just throw this out here now, if you die during the fight, Priestess Gwen will give you your stuff back for free. After 50 kill count, she'll start charging you 100k to return your stuff. But if you do die again without claiming your stuff from her, it will all disappear forever. So make sure you pick it up as soon as possible. As far as levels go, this is the lowest I would recommend going in with. Obviously higher is better, and you could nab some kills being lower. This is just what I consider to be reasonable. The standard approach to Zora is to go in with range and magic. There are methods of using just one or the other, but that typically requires very high-end gear. I would rather spend time on what your gear and inventory is going to look like. I'll begin with what I consider to be the core pieces. First off, we have the Ring of Suffering. During the fight, Zora will summon Snakelings that have 1 HP. This ring's recoil damage will take care of them without having to think about it, on top of giving you a nice defensive bonus. If you can't afford one, you'll want to stockpile some Rings of Recoil as a substitution. I also prefer to take a Serp Helm with me. It frees up two inventory slots and it has a good defensive bonus. It does reduce your damage output, but it's by a very small amount. The only other negative to it is that you end up having a higher supply cost to use it, but Zoro makes you a lot of money anyway, and I consider it to be worth the cost. When it comes to your weapons, there are a lot of options to look at. With some minor discrepancies, this is the general order of effectiveness, disregarding anything more high-end than a trident when it comes to magic. Since the trident scales with your magic level, after around level 87 it's going to be the best thing to take. Before that point, Fire Wave with a Smoke Staff and a Tome of Fire is going to be your go-to. The Slayer Staff, Magic Dart, Slayer Helm is only going to be used if you're on a Slayer task, and it only barely matches a trident TPS, and that's without the trident using a Slayer Helm. When it comes to range, it's a bit more straightforward. The blowpipe is pretty much top dog until you can afford things that are much more expensive. I will say that if you can afford the Bofa plus Crystal Armor, that's actually going to open up a range only method of killing Zora. But I will link a video about that down below rather than talk about it myself. So with all that in mind, this is going to be what I take with me on my trips. Below it, I'll add some cheaper downgrades. Be sure to reference the weapon effectiveness we just went over and sub in the best option you can afford. Also remember that if you're not taking a Serp Helm, you'll have to bring some sort of anti-venom in your inventory. And of course, I'll link the strategy wiki down below if you wanted to look at a more comprehensive comparison of what gear is best. There's simply too many options to go over in a timely manner. However, I do want to touch on Void. It can be nice to use in the sense that you'll have less swapping to do with your gear, but it lacks offensively and defensively, so I don't recommend going in with it. I also want to mention Spellbooks. Zora really doesn't have any alkables, so you have some options when you're not using fire spells. I personally prefer to be on Arceus for some thralls. I don't take death charge with me since I use my POH pool, but if you don't have one it can be useful, as the snakelings with 1 HP can proc it for you. Vengeance can also see some use here, but it's definitely less consistent than just using a thrall, and I just don't prefer it. But now we can move on to inventory. I'll show you what I bring for transparency, but my combat stats are maxed and I hit my rejuve pool after every kill so most likely yours is going to look a little bit different. It's worth noting that the Imbued Heart gives a nice DPS increase if you're using a Trident or a Slayer Staff, but it does very little to help you if you're going with a Fire Spell. This is probably more of what your inventory is going to look like. You will definitely need to play around with it depending on your gear and your stats, but it's a good template to start with. Just remember a lot of this can change depending on what you have access to. 
No Serp Helm means you should take an Anti-Venom. The runes in your rune pouch will change with what spell you brought. I mean, if you know you're just going in for one kill, you can drop a prayer potion or an extra recoil and just bring more food. If you do plan on grinding it out for a while, you'll be able to narrow down your personal inventory after a good session or two. Don't be afraid to experiment. But with all that out of the way, I think we're ready to start talking about the Danger Noodle and how we're going to want to fight him. I would say above all else, Zora is a fight of positioning and swaps. Let's start with the latter. Every single attempt, Zora is going to submerge and re-emerge around the island you're fighting on. Almost every time he goes down, he's going to come up as a new color. Green means he's going to attack with range and you will be attacking him with magic. As long as you're protecting range, he'll deal no damage to you. When Zora is blue, you will pray magic and attack with range. Even though Zora's primary attack is magic, He'll still occasionally throw out random range attacks. So when Zora is blue, you want to be prepared for potentially big unavoidable damage as his max hit is 41. And finally, Zora can be red and hit you with melee attacks. You do not need to pray defensively at all for this, but you do want to be attacking with magic. You're actually able to completely avoid his melee attacks with some movement. Basically the only time you need to do this movement is on either end of the island. When you see Zora flare his hood up, I move myself over to the other tile that I have marked on the ground. If Zora does connect with a melee attack on you, you'll be stunned and take a lot of damage as you won't be able to move out of the next hit that's coming after. Praying melee does not reduce the damage at all. I want to point out really quickly that standing on the marked tiles by the pillar will prevent Zora from landing a melee attack at all, but I'm going to touch more on that later. So this is going to be your cheat sheet. Memorize this until it's second nature. The less you have to think about making swaps, the easier it is to move around and stand where you need to be. A few more mechanics before we talk about positioning low. So you remember what I said two seconds ago about Zora attacking with either range or magic depending on his color? Well, if the fight lasts long enough, there will be what is known as a Jad phase. If you've done the fight caves, you'll know why it's called that. Don't worry though, it's not as scary. Zora's gonna come up and alternate hitting you with magic and range attacks. You're able to pray this by swapping your range of magic prayers back and forth every time Zora throws out an attack. The fireball projectile is magic, and the green sperm looking one is range. This is also going to be something I touch more on later. Just don't be intimidated because you'll be well aware of when it's going to happen and prepare for it. Beyond that, during the fight, Zora will summon snakelings that attack you. They can inflict venom and have a max hit of 15. As long as you have a ring of recoil or suffering, you really don't have to do anything about them as they only have 1 HP and the ring will kill them for you. Just be mindful of the potential damage they can deal, and don't sit too low on health. Also throughout the fight, Zora can throw down Venom Clouds around the island. You never want to be caught in them as they deal rapid damage, even with an Anti-Venom sipped. These are actually the reason positioning is so important in the fight. None of it is actually random either. Where Zora pops up, where you need to stand, and what color he's going to be is all predetermined by 4 different rotations. Let me just show you the map and some of the tiles you want to get familiar with. What I have marked right here are all the tiles that most people use for the fight. You don't absolutely have to stand exactly where it's marked, but for learning and for first timers, I suggest that you do use them precisely. I want to point out a few quirks. If Zora is right here, and you're using a blowpipe from either of these spots, you will need to be on long range to hit, not rapid fire. Also, standing on those same tiles will prevent Zora from hitting you with a melee attack, which is nice. And these tiles on the end are where you want to move back and forth for melee attacks when you're not standing by the pillars. All of these tiles on the map are going to correspond with where to stand on the rotation sheet. Thankfully, there are many ways to have one open and reference it while you're in the fight. You can download Zora Helper from the plugin hub. This puts it right in the client and it's nice for people with only one screen. I tend to have this rotation sheet opened up on my second monitor and I'll click on it to find out which rotation I'm in as the fight is happening. I mean, you could even scrunch it over and have it opened up on the same monitor if you like it better. You know, it's whatever you prefer. Just as long as you have one of them open to look at. I mean, it is so valuable to know where you're going to stand and what prayer and gear swaps you're going to need to do. But no matter what, at the start of every attempt, Zoro will start in the middle and you'll always want to run to the northeast end of the island. If it's your first attempt, this can be a good time to mark tiles as Zora isn't going to attack until he submerges then reappears for the first time. I also want to point out that the Jad phase will be marked as a two-colored circle on the sheet. Whatever color is on the left half is what he'll start the phase with. 
And remember, for Jad phases, he's always going to come up as green, so you want to be attacking with magic during any Jad phase. Now you may notice that the rotation sheet ends. Zulro will certainly continue the fight until he's dead, but after the rotation sheet ends, we really don't know what's going to happen. Everything tends to become random and you need to react to everything that's happening. You can try to stick it out if the kill is close, but if Zora isn't close to dead at that point, I would suggest teleporting out and trying again. So let me be 100,000 with you guys. I think looking at a complete rotation in action is very important to learning. There are some nuances in the rotations that I haven't touched on yet that can be good to know. So I have all four rotations recorded and voiced over. The problem is that they're about 12 minutes combined and I don't want to add them to the video because I think it's going to hurt my discovery in the algorithm. So down below I'll have an unlisted video linked that includes all of the rotations with my commentary for you to look at if you think it would help. My suggestion is to learn rotation 3 specifically because I feel that it's the easiest one to complete. You can start an attempt normally and if you end up with a different one you can just teleport out, come back in, and hope it's the right one. Once you do kill Zora though, I tend to teleport to my POH, hit the rejuve pool. If you're not going to do that, there'll be a teleport on the ground that you can take. It'll put you right outside the entrance of the instance so you can quickly run back in for the next kill. I think the best way to put everything is that you already have the answers to this test. You can see where to stand, what to pray, what gear to put on. It's a lot of looking ahead and preparing yourself for the next move. I know though, at first it's a lot. I remember dying on my first ever attempt and thinking it was impossible. I was never going to be able to do it. I swear to you that it becomes the opposite of that so quickly. It almost feels impossible to die after you get a good learning session in. I have a pro tip for you guys. Change your protection prayer first and then move to the correct spot. Your equipment swaps and attacks can come after you're safely where you should be. I mean hell, I would say for your first attempt just go in without attacking at all. Get used to moving around the island and putting on the correct prayers. Without the pressure of getting a kill, you can focus on learning the basics of positioning and making swaps. The last thing I can think to mention is that if you're really having a tough time with a kill, you can bring blood bark armor and use your best blood spell during the fight, instead of other magic weapons. This ends up healing you a lot and it can be the edge you need to squeeze out a kill. The only thing is that it's very expensive per cast, so I wouldn't suggest doing a long grind with it. You know, if you're just really jonesing for that 1kc for the achievement diary, it can make the difference. Alright people, if you made it to this point in the video, you should be certified to get yourself some Zora kills, and that's a tryhard guarantee. Of course, if you have any questions about Zora, or RuneScape in general, feel free to ask me. I want to give an extra thank you to my past and present patrons. Like the video if it helped you out, subscribe for more RuneScape content, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!